In this video, we are going to see how to set up the obstacle detection solution, which we call ODS. ODS is an algorithm created by IFM, which leverages the O3R perception platform to identify obstacles in the environment and therefore helps prevent collision and ensure safe navigation for autonomous or semi-autonomous vehicles. This will be a basic installation process meant to get you up and running quickly with ODS. This does not reflect the real environment in which ODS will operate once integrated onto a vehicle. You will need one OVP video processing unit, one O3R camera, an Ethernet cable, one FACRA cable, and a power supply. You can check out our wiring video to see more details on the wiring process. Also, to view the data, we will use the IFM Vision Assistant. You can download it from IFM.com. The first thing we need to do is to mount our camera on a suitable bracket. There are two things to consider. The first one is the mounting position, and the second one is heat dissipation. To ensure proper heat dissipation, we need to mount the camera directly to metal. This is very important because if the camera overheats, then it will shut down and no data will be streamed. We recommend to use a bracket of roughly 10 by 12 centimeters, which can be folded to gain some space. Regarding the mounting position, we are using a simple tripod which is 34.5 centimeters high. Your setup might have a different height. The camera is facing straight forward, horizontally. For this quick setup, since we are not precisely verifying the performance of the algorithm, visually verifying that the camera is parallel to the floor is sufficient. Now that we have our camera properly mounted on the bracket, I am just going to position it on the floor with some empty space in front of it so that I can test with multiple objects. Now, let's connect to the device using the Vision Assistant and look at the scene. I have positioned the camera mounted on the tripod directly on the floor, and it is pointing at the door of my office, and I also put a pallet there with a couple of boxes. The next step here is to calibrate the camera and the IMU. This calibration step will allow us to define the position of the camera and the IMU in a reference coordinate system. Typically, we use the vehicle coordinate system as a reference. By default, the camera has its own coordinate system, where Z is pointing forward and X is pointing in the direction opposite of the connector. The center of the camera coordinate system is at the center of the backplate. If we look at the view from the camera and the vision assistant, we can use the small coordinate system at the bottom left corner, and we can see that the z-axis is pointing in the forward direction, and in the direction of the pallet. In most cases, the reference coordinate system of the vehicle has x pointing forward and z upwards, and the origin is placed at floor level, in the middle of the steering axis. Now we need to define the translations and rotations along the X, Y, and Z axis between the camera and the reference coordinate system. To do this, we are going to use the manual calibration wizard in the Vision Assistant. Navigate to the Ports tab, and at the top left corner you will see the icon for the calibration wizard. When you click on it, you will see this window pop up. The first thing to check is that we are calibrating the right port. Our 3D port here is port 2, so we will switch to the port 2 tab. First, click on the Rotate Like a Vehicle Front Camera button. This acts as a shortcut to placing the camera facing forward in the vehicle coordinate system. On the right-hand side, you can see that the rotation parameters are automatically set. The third section defines the translation of the camera on the X, Y, and Z axis. For our simplified setup, we will assume that the center of the reference coordinate system is aligned at the center of the camera. The Z position defines the height of the camera with respect to the floor plane. Our mounting bracket is 34.5 centimeters high, so this is the value we need to enter in the Z translation section. Once we have our three rotation and our three translation parameters, we are done with calibrating our camera. The calibration parameters are directly applied to the settings, so we can exit out of the window now. We can see that the two cubes representing the 2D and 3D cameras are not in the same position anymore. This is because we did not calibrate the 2D port. Click on the arrow buttons for each setting and you will be able to directly synchronize the calibration settings between two ports of one camera. Once we have calibrated the camera, we can verify that the calibration looks like we expect. The expected coordinate system should have X pointing forward, which is in the direction of the pallet. It should also show Z pointing up. The second thing we can check is that the floor is aligned with the XY plane that you can enable in the view options. 
The floor is not always flat in the point cloud due to artifacts of indirect time of flight. These artifacts are filtered out by the algorithm, but you can still verify that the floor is where it should be. We can also check that vertical surfaces also appear vertical, for example, the wall here. For this simple test setup, this is a sufficient validation step. The next step is to calibrate the IMU, which is on the OVP. This is especially important when you will start performing tests on the vehicle where motion is involved. We are using the same calibration wizard, but this time we pick port 6, which is the IMU port. In this interface, you can pick the orientation of the OVP with respect to the vehicle coordinate system. You have to select the direction in which the cables are going and on which side the label is. In my case, the cables are pointing to the back, in the negative x direction, and the label is up. We are not inputting any translation values because we assume that the VPU is at the center of the coordinate system. Now that our system is properly calibrated, we are ready to start the ODS application. Navigate to the Application tab of the Vision Assistant and click on the plus button. Select ODS from the list of available applications. An application is created, and you can see that it already pre-selected some default settings. The main parameter to check is the ports list. The ports list shows which 3D camera will be used by the algorithm. There are two things to check here. Check that the port you want to use is indeed in the list. So in our case, it is port 2 and it is listed here. Then, check that the IMU port is also in the list. The IMU is available at port 6, and we also have it in the list here, so we are good to go. Now we can start the application. Click on the State drop-down list and select Run. Once the application has initialized properly, we can see this grid that appears. This is what we call the occupancy grid. The occupancy grid is a grid where each cell represents the probability of an obstacle being there. White cells correspond to a detected obstacle. The center of the grid corresponds to the center of the reference coordinate system, so anything that is in front of our camera should appear in the top half of the grid, within the field of view. For example, in our case we are using an O3R222, which has a horizontal field of view of 60 degrees. This means that objects detected will appear in the highlighted area of the occupancy grid. If you had another camera facing backwards, then you would see the objects behind the vehicle in the lower part of the grid. In the occupancy grid, the left group of cells correspond to the palette and the right group corresponds to the wall. Let's verify this in the monitor view. Here, we can see our point cloud, and we can also see the occupancy grid. If you cannot directly see the occupancy grid, you can enable it in the view options by clicking on the ODS button and ticking the check mark for the occupancy grid. A nice tip here is that you can expand this window on the right-hand side by clicking on the two arrows. And in this window, you can click on a cell in the occupancy grid and you will see the X and Y position of the cell. Here, the rightmost corner of the palette is 2 meters ahead of the reference point and 2 centimeters to the left. There is something else we can do with ODS, and it is to check for occupancy of specific zones. Zones are areas that you can define which will be triggered if an obstacle is in the area. Let's go back to our Application tab and click on Set Example Zones. We see these three zones that appear, red, yellow, and green. These come up with default simple shapes, but you can edit the shape by simply dragging the points around or creating additional points. You can also move the whole zone to another position. Let's keep our default zones for now. At the very bottom of the screen, you can see the current zone occupancy. Currently, we have the second and third zones, which are the green and yellow zones occupied. This makes sense because the palette is placed within the green zone, and in the yellow zone we see a portion of the wall. Let's move back to the monitor view. We can now see our zones displayed as well. If you do not see the zones, you can activate them in the View Option menu. When a zone is occupied, it takes a more solid color and when it is empty, it remains transparent. You will also notice that the zones have a maximum height. This means that objects that are above this height will not trigger the zone. This is actually also the case for the occupancy grid, because this parameter is common to both. You can find the maximum height parameter if you navigate back to the Applications tab and expand the configuration and then the grid sections. 
Then, for example, if we change this to 3 meters, we will notice the difference in the visualization. It is possible that you encounter issues while you test the system. Click on Device Status, and then Diagnostics, and a window will pop up with the complete list of diagnostic messages. Currently, we do not have any active diagnostic. If you see diagnostic messages that remains active, it is important to take a closer look and make sure to resolve them. You can refer to our documentation where we suggest mitigation strategies for specific issues. Now that we have seen everything set up and working properly, we can experiment with different types of obstacles. Pick specific objects that you can test with. For example, here I am going to put my coffee cup on the floor in front of the camera. We can see that the occupancy grid reflects the position of the obstacle and also that the occupied zone has changed. Now, all three zones are occupied, the first one by the coffee cup and the second and third one by the wall and the pallet. As always, you can check out our website for helpful information on any of our products or contact us at info.us at ifm.com or call into 1-800-441-8246 to speak with somebody who can assist you. Thank you for your time and have a great day. Yeah.